Sigma Kappa, we are here with Caitlin. Caitlin, thanks so much for joining me all the way from North Carolina. That's awesome. Happy to be here. I love your little lights in the background. It's very artsy. It's got mood to it. I like it. Um, I'm curious, tell us a little bit about your major, about your kind of like where you want to go. I'd love to hear. Sure. Um, I'm double majoring in political science and religious studies with a minor in Middle East studies. And I'm on the pre-law cool. track. So I'm looking to go to law school next fall. We are here with Cassie UMass Amherst. Cassie is the president of her, her Sigma Kappa chapter. Doing a lot of good stuff. Only a couple of weeks left as the president, Cassie. Tell us a little bit about your majors and what an interesting year it is to do what you do. So I'm a senior at UMass Amherst pursuing a dual degree in journalism and political science and a certificate in international relations. In addition to being chapter president of the Beta Eta chapter of Sigma Kappa, I also am the head news editor at the Massachusetts Daily Collegian, which is our student run paper here at UMass. So it's been a very interesting and challenging, but also awesome time to be a student, um, a senior in these leadership positions. Oh my goodness. <laughs> when do you sleep, Cassie? When do you sleep? <laughs> I actually love sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is um, I will not sacrifice my eight hours most of the time because I, I need it and I need that time. And I used to sacrifice it. And then I was like, I need to take care of myself. I'm going to get my sleep. I'm going to just say I'm done. This is it. And I think that's also a skill that I've learned. A hundred percent. That's so smart. So <laughs> high achievers are usually sacrificing themselves to get to where they want to go, but you've risen above that. Now you are this conscious high achiever who can say, I've got to survive this. I've got to thrive in the midst of it. I think that's amazing. Sigma Kappa, we are here with Alana Burke up in Boston. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. Awesome. Okay. Tell us all about you. What's, tell us your major. I'm a nursing major at Northeastern University. Awesome. Fill in the blank with me here. I want to be the next blank. Um, I think that I want to be the next like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. Um, she's so inspiring. Um, all I really want to do is kind of like over the summer I worked, um, at a civil rights firm as an intern. And I loved every second of it. I definitely want to do that for the rest of my life. So that's amazing. What do you, what like stands out to you about working for a civil rights firm? Um, I think that I just felt like really fulfilled the whole summer. I felt like I was helping people. I got to talk to clients. Um, mm. I learned a lot about the legal profession. I definitely didn't know before. Um, but it just, it feels good to help people. And I, I really enjoyed it. I love that. And you know, you bring up a, an interesting point because you're using the word fulfilled. You're not like, this was really fun and exciting. You're like, this was fulfilling work. It was hard work. I'm sure it was heart wrenching at times, but what was important to you is that you felt fulfilled at the end of the day. Yeah. Just like doing something meaningful with my time, um, making some kind of substantive, like, like substantive difference um, is really important to me. Okay, I want to see how you finish this sentence. Let's do a little Mad Libs together. I want to be the next. Well, I have a lot of uh, female journalist role models, so I couldn't, I can't pick just one. Um, I love Rachel Martin at NPR. I listen to Up First every single morning. Um, I love Morning Edition. Maggie Haberman, um, she's called the Trump Whisperer. She was a New York... Um, a White House correspondent, um, Jody Cantor, who wrote She Said, mm -hmm. also at the New York Times, um, and broke the Harvey Weinstein story with Megan Toohey, and Christiane Amanpour, forever and always. Um, I love international reporting. So those uh, four women have been my role models for a very long time. And um, looking up to them, I think, has really driven me on my path to becoming a journalist. That's amazing. And, and isn't it such so cool that you have all these incredible women to look yeah, up to? Definitely. Okay. I want to see what happens when we complete this sentence. I, Alana Burke, want to be the next blank. I want to be the next Florence Nightingale. She, just her background, she like is like basically like the creator of nursing. She started it. She made such a big impact. She's an inspiration. That's amazing. What do you love most about Florence Nightingale? 
I think just like the path that she set, because she this is so 2020 is actually the year of the nurse, and it's because 200 years ago was her birthday. So I think just like the path that she set, considering like it's been 200 years and that she's still like is so influential to all the nurses and like really just made everything like the way that it is, especially now in a pandemic. Like it's it's uh, everything she did is so important. <laughs> Yes. How wild is that, that this is like the year of the nurse when all this is happening? Yeah, it's a crazy coincidence. Do you, when you think about like your nursing friends and your life in this moment, you're about to go out into the world and be a nurse. How do you think 2020 has shaped your thinking about your career and in the way that your friends see it? I think it honestly has shaped it so, so, so much. Mm. So at Northeastern, we have like a co-op program where we take six months off classes and we work full time and that's for every major. So mm -hmm. I'm actually currently working in the hospital, which is like a crazy time working in hospital, but I'm working as like a critical care technician in an ICU. So I'm working like directly with the nurses. And I just think kind of seeing like what the pandemic has done to that hospital and how like they're handling it is it's insane. Like 2020 has really shown me like what it truly means to be a nurse. Wow. What have you learned? What surprised you? Um, I think what surprised me the most is how like resilient people are. Like it's, we've had like horribly sad cases and like everyone is just so strong everyone comes together and like everyone just really it's like just having that background of people that you can always like count on and just honestly how knowledgeable all the nurses are like they're all insanely smart like I, I just want to be like them <laughs> yeah nurses are wicked smart that is very true very true how do you think being a part of Sigma Kappa has influenced this part of your life and your career I think just being a part of a group of women who lift me up and build me up they're always willing to help me they're all we all study very different things um even though they most of the time have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> they always want to hear what i'm doing um like what i'm researching they want to hear about my like what inspires me and it's just like kind of being lifted up um by everybody all the time it's such a motivating group that it's so important and it would be easy to overlook that, but having sisters who cheer you on and encourage you and are curious about your life makes a big difference. Having like a big group of like 250 cheerleaders on campus all day long. It's, it's great. So how do you think your being a part of Sigma Kappa, how do you think being a part of Sigma Kappa has influenced your career goal to be a nurse, to be the next Florence Nightingale? I think it's been a really big part for me actually because I for 2020 I am the Sigma Kappa president of for my chapter yeah so I think it if you ask like any of my friends freshman me was like so quiet and shy like I never would I've been doing this like ever but now like just being present has opened me up like made me so much more comfortable and I think that's shown in my like interactions with patients and with like, other healthcare workers and I just feel like having that opportunity that Sigma Kappa gave me just really like showed me all that I can do as cheesy as it sounds. That's right though because that's such a huge part of your job isn't it to interact with the public to yeah. be comfortable in your own skin to feel confident about who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I love about Sigma Kappa too is that you also have this sisterhood that will go with you after college. You really are never alone. Yeah I agree even so like I'm saying, I'm not from Boston, but I do plan to stay here. And like, I currently live with a few people, but two of them are in Sigma Kappa and we're all like going to resign and get like our own apartment afterwards. So I like, even though like I'm fully graduating and leaving the chapter, like it's going to stay with me, which is really warming. That's the point, isn't it? It really is. We always think about it. Like when I'm in college, I do the sorority thing. And then I go off into the real world, but your sisters go with you for a lifetime. And this is a perfect example of that. I'm curious, how do you think being in Sigma Kappa has influenced your career goals? Yeah, um, endless ways, honestly. Um, I joined the first semester of my freshman year. I was scared walking up to all the chapter houses and um, I found a home in Sigma Kappa. But when I first joined, I learned very basic um, professional development skills like, um, you know, professional clothing, like how to show up to a meeting with a positive attitude and ready to learn. Um, 
and just organizational skills, maintaining a calendar while taking classes, things like that. Yeah. Um, I then took on some assistant positions, which are assistant positions to our executive board. Um, and in those positions, I learned how to be a team player, how to support a boss, ask them meet their needs without them having to vocalize them. Um, and then in the um, fall of my sophomore year, I was elected vice president of new member education. So I learned how to teach, how to inspire through love and passion. Um, I learned how to um, public speak. Um, yeah. Difficult. Um, I also learned, you know, how to make a meeting interesting um, mm -hmm. and informative. Um, but then definitely this last year's chapter president um, has been maybe the biggest period of growth in my life. Um, in this case, you know, it's a pandemic. So adapting yeah. to seemingly endless challenges, um, communicating with our national headquarters back to our local chapter, explaining some difficult things, dealing with, you know, finances and meeting everyone's individual needs at this time. But I also think the best leaders are those who are vulnerable and able to, you know, um, speak with and support the needs of others um, and approach the position, you know, with the sense that, you know, it's really hard. Everyone is going through it. You're, you have Zoom fatigue maybe, or, you know, you're dealing with the loss of not having this special last recruitment as a senior. And so I'm kind of dealing with that loss as well, but also trying to take on the needs of others and, and support them. Um, and I think that that has really challenged me in a great way to see that, um, you know, some things are bigger than us and I can be there for people and they'll be there for me no matter what title we have. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like approaching the position from a community. Um, but yeah, and also just like showing appreciation to others and being able to, you know, say no when I need to and set boundaries, but also, you know, take, um, take that appreciation when I deserve it myself. Yes. To say like, I did this, I'm proud of it and, you know, move on to the next thing. Yeah. So you've had a lot of different experiences that have influenced the way that you communicate, the way that you plan your day, the way that you treat yourself, the way that you treat other people. It's yeah. really cool. I think just graduating into the pandemic um, is making mm -hmm. everybody pretty anxious. Um, just figuring out what they, what, not only what they want to do, but like what they can do. Like it's kind of hard to find jobs right now. Um, getting into graduate school is definitely for a lot of people, like a big stressor. Um, but I have a couple of friends that already have career opportunities lined up for post-grad. Um, so I think people are kind of getting it, getting it together, but I think it's definitely the job market's the biggest, the biggest stressor. It's a hard time to navigate the job market because even maybe the rules that everybody's always played by, those may not be true anymore. When you talk to your friends and your sisters what would you say they feel the most stressed and anxious about being seniors about to graduate in this, you know, weird year that we're all living? What would you say people feel most anxious about? Um, so many things. Um, <laughs> Should we make I, a list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, first, I think, um, you know, there's just this feeling that we kind of have built our success on these institutions that we don't know if they'll exist. Um you know, like, some, for example, some internship programs, you could have this goal of getting this internship at this point of college that may not happen. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, connecting with this professor and only having that class on Zoom. And then, of course, there's the economic impact, not knowing if the job market will look um, great when we graduate. Um, and I know, like, I personally and some of my friends feel this need to, you know, cast a very wide net, which I think is a good thing. And kind of take life as it comes um, and, you know, being able to adapt. And then there's more of like also this personal feeling, I think of feeling like we're losing out on this very important time. Um, yeah. Always, I think, so even at times I've heard people say like missing out on my youth, you know, like I'm going to be a real adult soon and I want to be able to, you know, just see my friends relax. And of course we can't, we need to put public health first, but it's, um, just a very confusing time and a lot yeah of it would be yeah but um I think Sigma Kappa has provided a very strong support system we have academic program and we just had a career panel so we're lucky that we do have a lot of resources to help us or even just vent about this confusing and difficult time yeah you bring up a good point that you know it's hard to do alone yeah 
it's hard to, and you're, when you're listening to your friends, you realize we really do all need each other in this time. And we are all having to adjust expectations too, because the, maybe the thing that you aimed for, like you said, doesn't even exist anymore. So what do we do now? Exactly. Think, yeah. And I've definitely felt a lot of that myself too. You know, it's, um, yeah. it's difficult too, to think, um, like I will get, I know a lot of people also talk about getting like Snapchat memories or, you mm-hmm. know, seeing, um, maybe your sibling graduated and, um, I think there's also this fear that there won't be a feeling of closure at the end of college. Sure. Um, Yes. Like walking across that stage, although not necessary to receiving your degree is that moment of, okay, I'm like walking into the next phase of my life. And I think that's that closure, like that emotional, personal closure is super important. Um, So hopefully we'll have it one way or another. I'm not losing hope that, um, something won't be able to happen, even if it's virtual. So maybe mm-hmm. it'll work out. <laughs> Cassie, I really do think a lot of women are going to watch this and say, I'm so glad I'm not alone. Oh, Cassie yay. gets it. You know, this has been a challenging year. There's a lot of nuance to it that no one's publishing or writing about yet because we're kind of still in it. And so we really do have to hear from each other and normalize this whole experience that we're in. Definitely. Yeah. yeah I appreciate that you're doing this. I I definitely depended on my cohort of students last summer to kind of vent and be like, is anyone else just like sad right now? Yes, yes. <laughs> and also, uh, meanwhile, we were getting we're getting constant announcements and updates um, about like what the semester is going to look like, what classes are available. So it's just like nonstop. Um, mm-hmm. Like this weird, like you're either so bored or you're so overstimulated. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sure. That's very true. It is kind of both. It's like weird to be in both camps at the same yeah. time. <laughs> so agree. have you heard anything about Career House? No, not really, actually. Okay, awesome. So you think about like the sisters in your sorority that aren't in the spot where you are, where you're like, yeah, I'm definitely going to do the nurse thing. <laughs> and there's there's a lot of people who are wondering, how do I navigate 2021? How am I going to do this? And Sigma Kappa said, we want to be a part of this solution. So any sister that is figuring out her next career steps can come to our six-week class starting in January. It's like mid-January to February, and it'll be at night and they'll be recorded. They'll be in your learning management system too. So if you miss one, it's okay. But every class, we're going to teach another piece of career development. So understanding who you are and how to market yourself, how to go out and Um, write a resume that resonates with people that are hiring, how to network and talk about yourself to the public, and then how to even choose the job that fits your temperament and your personality best. So when you think about like the sisters that you know, do you think that any of them would benefit from some direction and some help in that way? Yeah, I I definitely do think so. I feel like I mean, given COVID and everything, no one really knows what they're doing. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. (laughs) But also like so Northeastern's great because of this co-op program because you have the choice to like try out different things and go mm-hmm. for it. But I think it would obviously help if they knew what they wanted to do rather than committing to a six month job and then being like, oh, I don't like this and then being stuck with it. So I feel like before they even get there, they could just like, you know, do career house and be like, oh, like this is what I think I'll enjoy. Like I'll apply to this co-op. Exactly. If there was one thing as a senior, if there's one thing you could say, since this is all of Sigma Cap is going to hear this, if there's one thing that you would share, I know I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> if there's one thing you would share with your sisters across the nation, what would you want them to hear right now? We'll all get through this together. I like, I, I know it sounds hard. I, I feel it. I missed the way the world was before this, but it, it will come to an end and we'll come out of it. That's so well said from a sister who is literally on the front lines. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for being here with me today. How do you think this last year, you've obviously had exposure in all these different ways to learn about different types of law and how you could apply that. How do you think 2020, truly the weirdest year of our lives, how do you think that's shaped how you think about your career? Not only did I have time to kind of like realize what is important to me and what is meaningful to me, what I want to do in the future. But, um, it's definitely like caused me to prioritize certain things over other things. Mm. Um, and I realized that when I was prioritizing my work over the summer, that, um, that like kind of like was 
an indicator for me. That you knew how important it was, it was almost clarifying to you. It sounds like you got some real clarity around what mattered most to you when so much was stripped away. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really powerful. Well, I'm so glad that we got to know each other today and to hear about the path that you want to take and your dream of being the next, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is awesome. We need you. We need women who understand law and want to learn it and apply it to make our country better. I think that's amazing that that's the work that you want to do. And I hope that in whatever way it makes sense that we can come alongside you and support you in that way. Awesome. It was great to talk to you too. I'm excited for all you guys have planned in the next year. Thank you, Caitlin. So Career House is coming in January and every week we're going to meet at the same time, 830 at night, and you're going to learn one more skill, whether it be interview skills, buffing up your resume, how to even really market yourself and talk about yourself, what questions you're going to be asked on an interview and what you want to be checking in on too. We're going to be doing all of that work together and nibbling away at it every week at 8.30 at night. And then we'll also have office hours. So even if you can't come to the, the class that week for Career House, you can come to the office hours and just talk to Lauren and I directly and ask like, does this look right? Am I doing okay? Is this? And so we love the idea that we'll be able to all join together as sisters. But then also if you need some personal touch, if you need some individual coaching, we'll be there during office hours to help you. So that's kind of the lay of the land. That's what we're going to be doing in January through February. It's just six weeks long. And anybody in Sigma Kappa can register for free on behalf of the foundation. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I love the, I love hearing the different lessons too, because I, I love talking about professional development, but one thing I feel like I've been struggling a lot with is like how to market myself and yes. skills to put on each application Yes. Making sure my cover letters are unique and thought out or even just what they want to read. Yeah. Um, and that's because you spend so many hours, right? Like working on these applications and it's like, is this even what they want to know about me? So I, I love, I love that. It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We would love to have you and help you along that journey. Cause I think that is the most stressful part. It's like, I want to do this well. I just literally, what are the rules? And so <laughs> That's why as executive coaches, we're going to come in and make it crystal clear. We're going to have worksheets for you that you can do in real time with us. The last thing that you need, well, you won't be the president anymore. So you'll have a little bit more time, maybe, but yeah. you know, the last thing everybody needs is like more stuff to do. So we're going to be co like co-working together, helping everybody process. So by the time you leave each week, you'll have more clarity and focus and you'll know what you have to do next. Because I think most of the anxiety for us high achievers is wanting to do it right, but not knowing what that even looks like. What does right even look like? Definitely. Yeah. I, I that's really exciting. And I, I know that for a school like UMass, we have a very long break. We don't start up until February 1st. So yeah. you might be similar with some schools where you, you also very much be motivating us and keeping us on like a schedule and making us remember that, you know, there is a world outside of this pandemic. Hopefully. Yes. Um, but yeah, and I think all of those opportunities are just so great. Um, yeah. Yes. And you seem so awesome. I, I really, <laughs> I already learned, I feel like I already learned something in this conversation. So I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'm so glad. I'm excited to stay connected and watch you continue to flourish and grow and you know, follow the people that you love and look up to. The reason that you admire people is because a part of you resonates with who they are. So you are, you are more like them than you may realize. And that's why you just intuitively follow them. And so I love hearing like the journalists that you look up to that you're watching getting, and you're also getting active practice for yourself as a journalist too. That's a great place to be. And in a year like this, the fact that you've stuck to it and worked hard and as a president, you know, able to stay focused during all of that. That just says a lot about who you are as a person. Thank you. I appreciate that. This yes. Really motivates me too to get through this last week of classes and keep working towards my goals. So I thank yes. you. You're gonna make it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, let's stay connected. And um, I can't wait to share this interview with everybody. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you for Career House on the weeks where it works for you and it makes sense too. It'd be awesome to have you there. Awesome. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. It was so great meeting you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too, Cassie. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.